Alright guys, welcome to a new, new, brand new episode of my YouTube series guys. As you guys know, our past episodes were all about my prep series and my athletes competing. And if you guys have followed me on Instagram, I have told you that I've been doing a breakdown of my, you know, my year so far with the prep. And I think I haven't said this in the middle of the prep that I'm going to give a fully breakdown of you know how everything went and what I felt like and all that kind of stuff so this is the video for it guys we are going to talk about how the prep was okay we're going to talk about three positive things that everyone should know if you're going to start a prep and the three most importantly negative things that in my eyes guys these are the three positive things for me and the negative things that uh, I think everyone should know what happens on a prep um, you know so uh, in, in you know in no particular order obviously I'm gonna go through this but I just want to say first what a year it's been you know uh, I said the other day on my Instagram it's been the best year of my life uh, I, as I said I've never ever had any bad years guys I've always had good years to be honest um, I could not name one bad year to be honest um, but this year is by far the best year of my life you know so it's just with everything we did have some ups and downs you know don't get me wrong uh, everyone has that you know you're alive you say you didn't of course i you know i had my ups and downs but considering that but putting that aside uh the year has just filled with more positiveness you know um it's just been everything has gone really really well regardless what i went through even during a prep or just in life in general um this year has just been amazing, you know, and um, what I mean is, uh, you know, I measure success not just with finances, I measure success with everything in life, you know, um, relationships, uh, finances is another one, you know, how you live your life, you know, growing as a person each and every single day, and obviously for me one of the most important things is getting close to God. You know, this that whole prep really taught me that, you know, and that that's one of the things which was so important to me. So uh, all of those boxes ticked off this year and I'm super proud with uh, me and my wife doing this together. We have not just crushed this year, we absolutely, I, I you know, I like to use the word pummeled. <laughs> we pummeled this year. So, uh, but we still have three months left. So, you know, uh, it's just going to get even better. And next year we have... A lot going on again you guys are gonna see some exciting stuff guys I'm telling you some exciting stuff coming in but let's get into this how did this year go with my prep guys one of the best preps I've ever not one of the best preps the best prep I have ever done in my life I must say that it was the hardest prep I've ever done in my life but it was by far the best prep I have ever done in my life guys you know uh, first of all you know as you guys know I started this prep at 44 weeks out uh, with my coach uh, Brendan Kempter. We started this together but unfortunately around the six week mark I had to take uh, control into my own hands guys because the main thing was right for me I needed someone at the last four weeks to uh, you know uh, see me and uh, I you know I just felt when it came to that six five week mark even though I still believe in photos because I have athletes who send me photos but I still see them in person the last four weeks out so I mean, I must say Brandon is a super awesome guy. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot. I tell this to everyone and everyone, the best coach I have, I have ever worked with, you know. He taught me a lot. I recommend any high athlete, any pro athlete, if you want to coach, go see Brandon Kempte. If you're at that level, oh my gosh, this guy is the man. I learned so much from him. So this, is, this has nothing to do with Brandon. So please, take that out of your minds. This has everything to do with me okay and me and Brandon we, we you know we talked about this and he was completely fine he understood it the reason why I thought the photos just didn't translate it to the look that I actually had in person you know so I felt uh, you know when you have that two kind of uh, you know um, I won't call it a conflict but it's just two mixed opinions you know in my eyes I'm seeing this and then in his eyes, he's like, oh, we need to do this, this, this. So I was like, you know what? I think it's best for me to take and control the last six weeks. And that's what I did. And yeah, it, it went smooth, you know. Uh, I mean, you guys saw the package that I bought. I, the best shape ever. But I have to thank Brandon for helping me those 44 weeks. And also, I even told this Brandon, you know, one of the main things I 
signed up with this camp because I want to be a really good coach, guys, you know. I want to be one of the best coaches in New Zealand. That's one of my goals in within the next five years coming up in the natural bodybuilding scene. And I got to learn from the best for that. So for me, signing up with Brandon Camter was to learn from the best. And I learned from the best. And um, I just learned so much and that showed through my athletes, you know what I mean? Uh, the stuff that uh, I learned from Brandon. Throughout that 10 months when I you know, worked with him, uh, he not just coached me, but he taught me, you know, that's the difference. And when I have you know, athletes under me, I don't just coach them, I teach them. And that's what I love about his camp. Long story short, going into that six weeks out, we had to make a tough call. And you know, people like to speculate BS. Oh, Alvin this, Alvin that. Guys, stop it, man. Absolutely stop it. Nonsense. I don't have time for this stuff when I'm 30 years old, you know. People are just absolutely, you know, I've, I've, I've heard some stuff. Oh, Alvin dropped Brandon because this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's ridiculous. You, you guys really need to, you know, some of you need to get a life. I'm just going to, you know, tell it straight away. Straight up. You know, go get a life, you know. Uh, it, it's just ridiculous where people make up stuff. Anyway, six weeks out. You know, I, you know, I took it myself, you know, I took it under me and I did my own coaching and obviously my wife helped me a lot. You know, she had another eye, uh, so we, you know, obviously I did all the diet, but she would say if I'm flat or blah, blah, blah. So I was very happy guys with the package that I bought. By far the best package I have ever bought in my life. So that was done, you know. In fact, it was the best package ever. I was absolutely shredded, you know. On the day of the show, on the peak week of the show, I, I weighed 65.8 on that Monday after refeeding on Sunday and then literally on that Thursday before after I carved up on Wednesday on Thursday I weighed myself I was 62.7 yeah I was so the, I lost three kilos within like four days obviously pulling you know doing all the peak you know dehydration and all that kind of stuff and then on the day of the show after I carved up and everything I was around that 64 mark I think I was 64.1 carved up going into the show so yeah so we got to that 62 mark which was crazy light but i was absolutely conditioned and as you guys know my placing i placed fourth in my class we had about how oh, many about eight or nine people in my class yeah we had a and uh, yeah i came fourth and um by doing it all natural guys no enhancements no steroids if this is the thing if i took steroids I would, as you guys know some of you know you know what some people need to understand this right Guys, if I really want to be a competitive, you know, competitive bodybuilder, if I want to become a pro and with my mindset, I know I can do it. And I'm not trying to like, you know, I know my confidence, you know, obviously, if a lot of people see what I did to my business throughout the last three to four years, I had a mindset of taking ADC to another level. You, you know, one of my closest clients, Alan, he knows what I talked about my business a few years ago. And that's exactly what's happening six years later. With my mindset, I know when I put something into my mind I, I i do it like nothing can stop me i did a 44 week prep <laughs> i dieted for 44 weeks not 16 weeks not 12 weeks 44 weeks and yeah of course i gained a lot of body fat but a lot of people don't have the discipline to do that so when i if, if I, and i'm not being arrogant here i'm just being super duper honest here if i put my mind to anything and if i said i'm gonna go on a sh crazy amount of gear and be a meathead absolute meathead i know i'm gonna give my best shot to be a pro bodybuilder and would i get it i think i will you know and i'm not putting myself down in new zealand 100 percent, i think i will you know if i've been all these grams and all this cycle i think i can put easy not easily um i you know with my genetics i'm not saying i have the greatest genetics i have pretty decent genetics you know, I could put about anywhere between 6 to 10 kilos of muscle in about 2 to 3 years of doing like a proper hard cycle. So, so if people think I was so light on such guys, that was being natty. Okay? Alright? Okay, if I do enhancements, I can be 10, 15 kilos lighter. And also, I was natty. I beat the, the guys that I beat in Australia were 20 kilos heavier than me. And I saw the names. Some of those guys were on the 8th because, because, you know, we didn't have a weight. Uh, yeah, we didn't have a height cap because if you see my... You know, my show day video, I was the smallest guy on stage. I was the shortest guy on stage. In New Zealand, we have a height cap and a weight cap. But we, when I was competing with different heights and different sizes, and I still weighed four people, you know, four or five people in my class. 
and I came ninth in the open, which I which I was very again happy about because I thought I was going to be last on the open. Those guys were crazy. And then when I saw I was fourth in my class and ninth in the open, being natural, I, I just honestly, guys, that was a win for me. I'd like if you you know that day on the Instagram story when I put this. Uh, I thought I didn't place. I really thought I didn't place, you know. And then when they sent the score, cause I was like, man, it's, it's like me being in the Olympia, cause I did it naturally. I literally did it naturally. No enhancements, no chemicals. So what if I do a hard cycle? Question mark. Where would I place with my work ethic and the determination? I know I can do well. I know I can do well. And this is not being being arrogant. This is being absolutely confident. I call myself the Sri Lankan gorilla for a reason, guys. All right, okay, so that's why. But saying that, came off stage, I was super happy. I thanked and praised my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for, oh my gosh, for an absolute season. That prep was such an emotional prep for me. Uh, as I said, I had to go through a lot on that prep, you know, <laughs> social media BS, people calling me out. Anyway, that's sorted out. But you know, all this crap I had to go through and I did not let none of that distract me, okay? Because I know one thing in my mind, I, you know what guys, I had in my goal. I know God's gonna take care of everything in my life, all right? He's in charge of my life. Everything that I do is to glorify my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the outside noise can do whatever they want. I don't really care. Because he's going to deal with it, okay? And this prep taught me that. And that's how I got so close to God in this prep, you know? And my life, ever since I've got so close to my Lord, it's changed so much. You know, I'm not the same Alvin that I was two or three years ago. You know what I mean? So this prep not just taught me that, it, it taught me so many lessons. That's why I put this prep the best. I hired, one of, I hired in my eyes the best coach ever I worked with. You know, when it comes up to bodybuilding, guys, what I love is, you guys know I study this sport a lot. I study nutrition a lot. I study training methods a lot. And I have learned a lot watching YouTube videos, watching podcasts, working with Brandon Kempter. I have, I have learned a lot of this stuff and I come up with my own ideas, you know. So for me to become a better coach, for me to become a better person, I mean, a personal trainer and a coach, I have to learn from the best. So when some people say, oh, I know everything, that's when you, you know you are not a good coach or not a trainer because you didn't enhance your knowledge. So when I first came into this prep, I knew I had to enhance my knowledge, go to another level working with the best in the, in the natural bodybuilding scene. That's exactly what I did. And the results speaks, you know, uh, I learned about females, you know, hormones, how to manipulate, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of my girls are getting crazy amount of, uh, you know, uh, results because I invested my knowledge in it and I put a lot of money in it. Getting coach is not cheap, especially when you have overseas coach. It is very expensive. Doing it for almost a year, you guys can do the math. That's a lot of money, but it's for my knowledge to enhance myself as a trainer and a coach because I'm a number one trainer, number two bodybuilder. And my goal is to be one of the best coaches within the next five years, natural coaches. So now guys, we're going to go into, this is a question that I got when I was prepping as well. What are the positive things that you think of prep and the negative? So I'm going to go starting from, let's just start from negative. Again, my wife is going to join me later on and she's going to say her opinion about this as well. Three negative things by particular order. Okay, I'm going to go three. Number three comes up too. One of the things, number three, in my eyes that is negative is you got to be selfish, guys. Okay. And this is why I want my wife to come and talk very later on. Uh, when I'm prepping, guys, I am selfish. And that is not just putting my, you know, I, I obviously, like when I say selfish, I'm a lot. Obviously, you know, I'm a family man as well. What I mean is I isolate myself for the last three months of the prep. And I've told this to everyone. I don't see my parents. I don't see my friends. I think this prep it was like four months out. If I'm right, right? About four months out, I didn't, I didn't talk to anyone. You know, I tell my friends, hey, we ain't talking for the next three to four. I mean, we, we can text and everything. We can train in the gym, but we, we ain't going out or nothing like that. So if you see my best mates who are Mendes and Drew, uh, they train with me in the gym because that's the way for us to catch up and talk, but I never been out. So that's being selfish in my eyes because obviously you can't give 
that much to the people that you love you know so that's me i mean prep everyone's very different I've, i have coached a lot of athletes who are they like to go out still and that's fine as long as they take their top wears and you know top wears and stuff i don't really care and stick to your coke zero but for me guys i like to isolate and i like to feel like i'm going to war you know and that's just my mindset how i work for me guys it's about isolating myself i tell my friends hey i'm sorry but next three to four months we're not going out we can meet each other in the gym that's our socialized you know socializing time but other than that i'm just a zombie you know and then i tell my parents i'm not gonna come see them i'm right, three to four months look that's just me okay it's just me i'm not telling anyone to do this that's how i worked with all my preps and it's just me honestly guys it's just me and my wife that's all it is okay i don't see my parents i don't see my friends only in the gym if they want to come see me and that's about it obviously that these are the people that care about me as well so they understand when i prep i go very hard they know alvin don't mess on preps alvin stick to everything that he does you know he needs to get his meals in he needs to train like a maniac and that's why that's why honestly that's why i love bodybuilding because it puts me to that mind you know that that, that crazy ass dungeon mindset you know and um uh do i love it i i love it uh, but i don't think you know people around me enjoy that much but they still support me and as i said it's just me and my wife no one else you know not even my parents you know so which is which is sucks but that's me being selfish you know so my wife knows what i go through on prep as well so she will tell you exactly how what i went through this year obviously how she felt it as well so later on now number two is finances okay now this is a topic i always tell people before you sign up for a prep make sure you guys are good to go obviously i don't have any finances issues okay thank god i'm blessed with a very good income a very good business so you know that's why i was managed to do this prep i would say pretty easily but <laughs> you, know, you know there's still a lot of money okay it is a lot of money i could use that money honestly to honestly put it into another business but uh that money is towards my business because i'm a personal trainer and a coach so this is what i tell people man if you are going to prep make sure it's for a good reason you know for me every time i do a show my coaching goes up uh i'm in two weeks right now into as i said that i'm gonna announce you know i'm gonna take clients and i've been getting so many hits you know so i'm very busy as a you know trainer and a coach so i get a lot of clients during that time and because my social media presence is also really good um yeah for me it's an investment i spent about 30k it included obviously my grocery to 280 i was eating 400 grams of prawns a day times that by seven 800 grams of prawns is 19 dollars. so i had to get about like five six bags it's 95 dollars on prawns my coach was not cheap at all it was a lot of money for him as well uh and uh also my other stuff my supplements some of the supplements i had to uh, actually you know some supplements yeah i had to order it from the states uh, you know, I'm not going to say any supplements because they're, they're, very, they're very confidential. If you want to do that, you get coached by me. <laughs> then you will know what they are. Uh, but yeah, so some of those supplements we didn't have in New Zealand. So we had to get it from the States. My show was in Australia. Remember this, guys? Already booked my accommodation in Sydney 12 weeks out. And uh, Tony Doty, five weeks out, he said it's not going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's going to be in Melbourne. So I, so I had to make a choice. Obviously, you guys saw that on Instagram. A lot of my clients were backing me up. So I had to rebook my tickets again. Okay. So that was, what? Another 8K, I think. Because Sydney was, the tickets were at that time were pretty expensive. It's unexpected cost. Unexpected cost. you have to be prepared. For. you got to be prepared, guys. Okay. So I tell people. So yeah, it cost me about 30K for this whole prep. And uh, it, it was a lot. But obviously, it's, you know, I can make that money back pretty well i'm already making that money so it doesn't really matter um so yeah finances make sure you guys have your finances sorted man okay all right if you if you are if you don't have much money guys please don't start a prep don't don't get any unnecessary loans for just to do a bodybuilding show and flex your muscles and if you don't have a purpose uh, it's crazy some people do this and honestly i don't know why they do it don't get loans if you can't afford it from your own pocket you should not be prepping wait till you're established okay all right it's just how it is and then in, in this day and age food is very expensive coaches are very expensive supplements are very expensive 
you got to make sure you have money to do this okay all right so please make sure your finances are on point before prepping and number one is your health yeah another thing that you should consider guys I lost my sex drive about I think like this is I, I honestly lost it about about 14 weeks out 15 weeks out nah man it was I was I was already getting pretty lean by that time you know um, I think by 10 weeks out 11 weeks out guys yeah no nothing was happening no no cuz my I was super tired I remember eight weeks out I was so tired I was like a zombie I had to tell my clients I got to give them a massive shout out thank you so much guys for being with me you guys not just help me but you guys just said, I mean, we know what you're going through, and it honestly inspired a lot of you know a lot of my clients, and they were nothing but supportive. Uh, but they knew how much I was struggling. There was a point where I couldn't even come upstairs in our house, like I couldn't even pull myself. You know, what I mean, it was that bad. You know, my wife knows it, because I got extremely shredded, and the weight that I had was completely unhealthy. So guys, this sport is not healthy, but you can try to minimize risk. Obviously, steroid bodybuilding is another level that is super unhealthy. But even natural bodybuilding is still not healthy. It's still unhealthy, but it you can minimize risk. Okay, um, so that is the three negative things in my eyes. So if you are doing a bodybuilding show, these are the three that I think you know you should know. So there you go. Now three positive stuff. Number three is routine. What you know? What I love about prepping routine, guys. Oh my goodness. I love the routine. You know, I used to wake up 4.30, 5 in the morning. I had a routine where I wake up, get my coffee, I listen to my sermons. I still do it, but I, the only thing is I don't wake up early. I used to do my walks. My wife is sleeping. 5 in the morning, I wake up. I do my steps around the block. And I come back, and then I get ready for my clients. I get my BP station coffee. Man, how much did I spend on coffee? Goodness gracious. Now we have a coffee making machine. I used to, that, that was my routine, okay, and then I train my clients, I come back home, and then go for my afternoon clients, I do my videos, my social media stuff, oh my goodness, the routine is the best, remember this guys, your body loves routine, and my body loved it, that's why I'm still doing it, the only difference is now my training times, it doesn't have to be that early, I usually train around like 11, 12, 1, uh, in prep I was training like sometimes nine in the morning now i can just train anytime i want but i still have a routine because i still carry on that routine to this day because i'm just used to it and that's what i love about prep it keeps you in a routine number two is the discipline this discipline it teaches you you got to stick to this diet if not you will not be shredded when it comes to discipline in bodybuilding whatever you put you get it back so what i mean is if you cheat on a diet you're gonna go 10 steps behind if you don't cheat on your diet, you're going to keep on progressing. So that's called discipline. For you to stick to a diet, you need discipline to stick to a hard diet like a bodybuilding diet. Because remember, this is not a summer strip diet. This is a bodybuilding diet. It's another level. For you to get into that level of bodybuilding, you've got to be disciplined not with your diet, which is number one thing, and also with your training. There's a, there's a way that you should be training as well, especially from the start to the middle, to the end. For us to stick to a training plan like that, you need to be disciplined. You need to be disciplined with your diet and your training. So what I love about bodybuilding, it teaches you discipline to stick to a particular thing for that period, which you have to do. You have to eat the same thing, train this way, a certain way, and you gotta keep on doing that for every single day. And yeah, it can be boring, but that's a sport, but that requires discipline. Okay, the last thing guys, number one, it teaches you a lot about yourself. Now, what I mean by this is, guys, when I first started bodybuilding years ago, okay, as I said, this also goes back to discipline. I apply the teachings of bodybuilding, not just into the bodybuilding sport, but into day-to-day -day of my life, okay? Being patient, all right? Especially with your business, okay? I'm in an industry where you have to be super-duper patient, with clients, with athletes, because sometimes when you're coaching athletes and stuff like that, or if a client cancels, it get into your nerves, you know, it can screw up with your day. But I learned the patience how not to let it screw up my day. Now, I'm not saying I'm not perfect here, of course I get my times, but you know, as I said, in this prep, I was getting close to God. He, number one, he he's the one who teaches me patience, you know, but what I mean is, if you go back to bodybuilding, being disciplined and patient, 
you can go so long with your physique which I apply to my business and this is why I've been a trainer for coming up 10 years next year and I've coached multiple people I've trained so many people throughout these 10 years coming up you know I can't even count uh, and why because it taught me how to be patient with my business when things were not going my way be patient okay uh, God was always telling me be patient all right and also being the sport of bodybuilding same thing that applies be patient okay and when I was patient things will start to happen a lot more so also it tested my character it, 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 it taught me how to be uh, more hard on myself you know when I have to say no to certain things say no to certain things and I test my character when it comes up to you know like if I had to go somewhere and you know I'm a guy I like to go out somewhere like tonight we're gonna go get burgers right when I'm prepping <laughs> there will be some function which, which I actually avoid going into functions but there will be one or two functions I need to go you know uh, you know either at church or you know somewhere here and there and they'll have all this food I ain't gonna eat that I can't you know so it, it really teaches you know it really tests your character and it taught me a lot when it came up to my relationships again how to be patient how to really uh, just make sure that I take my time with everything you know don't rush things because on a prep you don't rush the prep okay you prep for weeks and you slowly get to that physique you have an end goal but you start off at that point but to get to that point it, there are slow steps that you take you know and then at the end goal is your reward that's what bodybuilding just you know did to me you know it taught me a lot when it came up to my business my relationships uh, you know other stuff in life that's what I love about bodybuilding guys it teaches you uh, your, your you know it, it, it taught me how to be honestly a better person and thank you God for putting that passion in me you know it's him at the end of the day again I've got to give glory and thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he put that passion in me and he taught me a lot through the sport of bodybuilding you know and the number one thing he also taught me is some things will happen in life you know when you go through a prep unexpected things happens and what the Lord told me you know during this prep regardless what you go through you know he's always gonna be there and number one thing for me no matter what you finish the race and that's exactly what we did okay so guys to wrap this video up I hope you guys uh, really took some points out of, you know out of this and also people are asking me Alvin when are you competing again honestly guys no I'm not thinking of competing again okay now will things change look I'm never gonna say never never say never but at this point of my life guys I don't even think you guys need to understand this right in 2020 when I competed when I finished in 2020 there was some unfinished business my wife knows it and I told my wife when I started this prep I need I'm not happy with how I looked in 2020 that was the worst shape of my life and I can't if I'm gonna retire in the sport that I love I'm gonna retire in my own terms okay and that's what I told my wife I need to do this one more time and just be peaceful with my heart and that's exactly what I did so if I'm retired now guys I can say I went to Australia competed in the IFBB Australia competed against freaks and I bought my best package ever so I have nothing to prove anymore this might be it okay but again never say never all right in maybe another five six years I might be like yo but I don't know I don't know that's that's a big question mark at this stage no no absolutely not so what am I doing now I'm doing bodybuilding for myself I still want to look jet I'm still gonna do cuts I'm still gonna put my stuff on social media and I'm still gonna do bodybuilding poses because I'm not just a bodybuilder on stage guys I'm a bodybuilder lifestyle I'm a bodybuilder walking I always tell this to people I'm not just a stage bodybuilder I'm a bodybuilder when I'm not on stage as well because it's a lifestyle I still have goals I still want to bring my arms up so even if I never competed I still want to look at myself and probably like I bought that up so I do bodybuilding for myself now not for five six seven judges who want to tell me to do this and that those days are done okay I'm still gonna go to the gym I'm even like I'm, I'm always training hard but now I think I'm even training harder I'm even training hard right now because in my mind I want to bring my this up I want to bring this up my chest more fuller so I'm making this physique for myself guys because for me bodybuilding is not just doing a 25 week prep 
and going and flexing on stage. It is way more than that to me. This sport means a lot to me. I'm going to be a bodybuilder for the rest of my life. Okay? All right? It is always going to be in my heart. Lovely wife is joining me. As, as, as you guys know, she was a big part of this prep. In fact, she went through a lot in this prep. <laughs> so I'm going to ask her some questions. Okay, I'm going to ask her some questions. So this might benefit you guys' relationship out there. Okay, if you are prepping with a partner. Yeah, prepping in a relationship. Yeah. So if you guys are prepping with a partner, and this might actually help you out. You know. So babe, can you explain to them what, what, what's the most hardest thing you had to deal with this prep with me? Obviously, you've been I'm with me. I'm probably not like a good ambassador for talking about this because for me, um, I'm like pretty over bodybuilding to be honest. Mm. So it's, and but I have that perception because like I've been through years and years of preps with you. Whereas like if it's like your first time going through a prep with a partner, like it can be challenging because you don't really know what you're in for. But I'm kind of on the other end of the scale because I've done it so many times that it's mm. like. I'm, I'm over it now like it's not yeah. something I want to go through anymore of course. Um, but like the first few times you go through it can be like it's it can be quite exciting because it's something new and like you know you can kind of like it's influenced me I guess in a good way because there's so many times he's done preps and then like it's influenced me to um, like jump on a diet and, and get in serious about my fitness and it's helped me like lose weight and like achieve my fitness goals as well at the same time so mm -hmm. like I guess it's good in that sense um I probably answered the next question I haven't really answered what you said have I what did you ask me no I asked like the, <laughs> the like, struggle like what's the yeah so we'll like, go from bad to good okay What's the, like, the, like how did you struggles. find the prep? Yeah, yeah like, okay, you know, what were the struggles that yeah. you had to go through in this 44 week yeah. prep? I think at the start it was fine, but like the last 20, but, like, 16 yeah, so weeks. I guess like the struggle for me was like, I get like, going back to what I said before, like starting a whole prep was like having to go through, like sacrificing like date nights and like not really going out and doing much. Mm -hmm. um, and also like, I guess like leaving you alone a lot because especially at night time, like he likes to relax and watch meals and like everything's very routine even with that like watching a specific thing on tv so it's like <laughs> i think that's what for me is <laughs> like annoying because it's when you're prepping it's like yeah. i'm just it's always like greg do set or oh. like Fuad or like all <laughs> these all these bodybuilding videos and yeah. i'm just sick of it like and i just don't bodybuilders watch eating it. food <laughs> yeah and like eating the food and it's just like too much yeah um yeah. so like i don't know maybe that's not everyone's experience but like yeah. that that was that for me it's just like i'm surrounded in it too much and it's just like all the conversations is bodybuilding body am i getting leaner do i look like this and like yeah it's just like overload so it can be quite overwhelming especially if it's not something you're like super into um which i was like at one point in time but like haven't been for a while so um yeah kind of like over the conversations like it can get very like your world gets very small because it's just all about that constantly and it's like the co constantly in your conversations and on tv and like mm. and everything you do so it just you, it can get a bit much and then you're at the gym all the time and it's just yeah it, it gets a bit much and so for me it was that it was the overwhelm of it like just taking over everything um and then yeah obviously like not being able to go on date nights not being able to go out um yeah. yeah which was really tough and then kind of just like the conversations not really being the same either because he wasn't mentally there so I had to really understand that like we're not going to have that same level of like conversation and um mm. and just having to you know like he'll come home and just be like he just want to watch tv and just yeah. do his own thing pretty much the whole night and i just had to understand that like he didn't have the energy or the mental capacity to do what he usually does so it was hard for me to constantly be like hey it's just it's not for not forever not forever so you just have to keep telling yourself mm. you know it's it, it's, mm. it's just for now yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also, this is what I tell guys, you got to have the right partner behind you. And a lot of breakups happen in bodybuilding, you know. It just happens, you know, because a lot of, yeah, people just can't get through that. And a lot of breakups can happen if you don't communicate properly when you are doing bodybuilding, guys. Remember that. Uh, obviously, <laughs> she is sick of it, don't get me wrong, but she still supports me because she knows... I love bodybuilding. It just puts a, a massive, me. massive, massive strain on your relationship. It does, it does. But me and her, because we we actually met in the gym, we met in this in, in 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 you know 
at Snapford does in 2015. So I was already she competed even before me in 2016. Yeah. Remember that? I I, I, I competed like, after her. We were both in the bodybuilding grind. We were, again. Yes. So she gets me, even though she. So I get it from that perspective. Yeah. Exactly. So she knows it, and she knows also it enhances my business, helps me to, you know, grow my following and coaching. You know, and every time I do a show, so she gets it. Mm. And also, as I said, guys, there's a reason behind it. This is why I always tell you guys, have a reason, have a purpose. Don't do a show just because of it. Because a lot of people, as I said, I see so many breakups because there's no purpose behind a prep. So that's why people go break up or partners get this and that. And they end up because there's no purpose behind it. Yeah, if you don't have a purpose. Super important. Especially yeah, if you're putting you're other right. people through it too. Exactly. And that's what I was always kept in mind too, that like he's mm. doing it for, for his business, mm. for his own knowledge. And those are the main reasons why, not just exactly. for the hell of doing it. Yeah. Because he'd done it so many times so before. Many times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like keeping that in mind that there's like a, there's a solid purpose, purpose behind yeah. why we're having to go Do through it. it. In yeah. fact, brutally being honest, it feeds my family. Mm, yeah. Yes. It feeds my family. You know, my kids in the future and everything. Like I want to set everything up because even if I now didn't compete, I don't need bodybuilding. You know, I'll, I'll set everything up. So. so it's a necessary sacrifice. Exactly. So tell them what were the, obviously the good things you went through prep in this. Obviously what you found the best, you know, like what were, like, what were the positive things? Positives were like you, I know that you really wanted to get back in shape again. So it was super important for you. So like to see you be able to, um, finally get back there and get back into the routine was really like that, that was yeah. nice to see yeah. um, and it, as I said it always influences me too to yes, like yeah. get serious about my fitness yes. stuff again um, but like it shouldn't take a bodybuilding prep for us to be like yeah. you know solid about our routines but like yes. you know life just happens and you kind of fall off track and um, yeah but I mean it's all but positive. that's no we don't need yeah no. exactly I mean and it's sort of something you've got to go through um, several times sometimes to kind of find your your groove with it and yeah and now I feel like we're in a really good place we don't mm. need anything like that to um, motivate us and get us on track um, so yeah so that's really good and then obviously I know that like professionally it was a great move for you as well for your career for your business um, so it was a positive crazy in that sense yeah. and I think that would that would probably be um, it, and it, obviously for the the most recent prep that you did, a positive was that it took us overseas twice. So, sure. and we weren't even planning to go to Australia, to be honest, um, at all. And we went to Sydney and Melbourne both in the same month. So, um, and yeah. Sydney we'd never been to yeah. before. So, so it took fun. us to those two places, yeah. and we had a great trip both times, and it was amazing. And um, so, yeah, also the positive yeah, positive. yeah, and also um, the prep also uh, encouraged us to. Well, it was the reason why we bought this camera, to be honest, because of documenting okay. the prep journey. Um, and I learned a lot through that. Like, I oh never gosh. knew how to film before. I never knew how to edit videos. I never knew how to make YouTube videos or anything like that. And so I've researched and learned how to do all of that through this prep as well. And so our content has improved through, like, through doing the prep. So there definitely are a lot of positives that have come out of it. Um, yeah, for sure. Mm. So yeah, so as you know, guys. As but on said, that note, I'm happy to finish it. <laughs> finish it off of now and <laughs> have that be the last one. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, if anyone asks me, you know, I'm I, honestly I'm also very. I have a piece in my heart, like I really do, and uh, I really, really do that. Yeah. Because again, it's more. like you always have to assess, like, why would I keep going? Yeah, like, there's, there's no what am I going to get out of it? Like, definitely. if I'm not willing to go down this path or whatever, if I don't want to pursue a pro card or like, no. and then even that, like, if I get a pro no. card, is it like, what's the purpose of that? Like, do I want to be a pro athlete? Or as you said, like you, the business side of it is more important for you. Yeah. And your not being stinky, yeah. not being stinky. But as you were saying, but... like, you're like, I think being a pro athlete or whatever is easier for people that are not in the personal training industry because they can kind of shut off and they've got a different life. Whereas, I think it's quite hard if you are a personal trainer and you're also trying to be a pro athlete. I think mm -hmm. that it's really tough. Um, or, or, or not just that, like, if you have a client based business where you have to be mentally switched on with your clients. I mean, it's it's tough with any job you have, but I mean, you were proof of it that like you prep really well, but even you were suffering and like, it's not fair that like your clients suffer as a result too. So, you know, and, and that's just a sacrifice you have to make. But then as you see, like, is it worth doing another one? You know, like 
and when you when you were 25 26 it was a necessary um, it was a necessary sacrifice that you had to make because you were new like you needed experience and you were building your name and that sort of thing so it was necessary to, to do all those shows and to keep competing back then but like you've done that like you've done all the footwork for that now so now that you're 30 it's like is it really necessary like you've no, done it like do you really need to keep going not. and keep going for what yeah. for what purpose for what reason yeah. and like you said like you don't need to do it you don't need to step on stage and take yourself to that extreme anymore um you just continue bodybuilding as your passion and hobby which mm. is how it should be exactly and um, because you're focused on the coaching aspect rather than right. being an athlete yourself and not worrying about other people's preps as well that's um, right yeah and obviously not to be stinky but obviously bodybuilding you know bodybuilding is a sport where to even be a pro i think this is the only sport that you got to pay to get a pro card like you got to pay for the fee every year like 400 dollars mm, us or something right. what sport does that so so oh i mean people say hey are you gonna chase him no i couldn't care less of being a pro that was no, <laughs> no. Maybe like six, seven years ago, that was one of my goals. Number one, I don't want to do so much gear and I don't want to do steroids because I'm good, okay? If someone wants to do it, that's their part, please, hey, that's fine. I have, you know, my mates who are doing it and their body that's completely fine, but that's not a route that I wanted to choose and I don't want to go through that route. Uh, and number two, uh, being a pro, what, what's, what's it, what is it going to bring? Oh, it's going to enhance your b business. And I'm going to be straight up here, but... I'm not a pro <laughs> and my business, I have a lot of clients more than most of the pros in New Zealand. Mm. Just being honest here, just being honest here, but most all right? Of the, most of your business okay. is not from bodybuilding. Not from bodybuilding, but I have bodybuilding athletes, I have lifestyle athletes, I have pregnant moms, <laughs> which I'm coaching now, I have all types, I'm not just a bodybuilding coach, I'm all so, I'm, I do everything. So my client rate is pretty big, you know? Uh, and uh, if you see uh, most of the good coaches in this country are pros mm. they're not you got f I mean you got a few good coaches in this country who are pros but I mean most I mean some of the good coaches in this country thing, you know, are not pros and they have crazy they got a crazy business because it comes they're back to pros. the same thing it's like you have to prioritize what's yeah, more important to you exactly. being so, an athlete or being a coach like which one's more important to you because you can't yeah. I mean I don't I think very 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 few people can do both successfully if yeah. any and even at the top level if you see like the people at the top are not coaches themselves no. they're no. purely athletes yeah. If, yeah exactly I mean in the Olympia is Hani Rambaud a pro no, he's not. He's never been a pro. He only did probably one or two natural shows and boom, he's coaching all the Olympians. So that, that is a proof in the cake, you know? So, I mean, if you want to be a pro, that's your thing. That, that's complete. But just because you're a pro doesn't mean anything. Trust me. Doesn't mean anything. All right? And uh, yeah, guys, I want to wrap this video up. All right? Uh, thank you so much for coaching. For life. Let's go with this. For lifestyle coaching. Because some people think I'm just a body. I'm not just a bodybuilding coach, guys. Please. I, in fact, started my career as a personal trainer in 2015 okay and i was not a bodyboarding coach so i was a lifestyle coach first if and then i became a bodyboarding coach okay lifestyle coaching bodyboarding coaching any 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 fitness goals you wanna do and the guy alvin Dice coaching hit me up all right guys i will coach you and help you to be the best version of yourself go to my instagram you can see all the proof okay all right have a safe safe day guys god bless you guys I enjoyed this video and learned a lot See you in the next one.